In this video, I'm going to discuss a pole placement procedure for designing controllers for systems which are, in a sense, problematical, which can't be solved by uh, piecing together um, the standard uh, controller components that we've considered in this class thus far. So, so far we've taken a look at proportional controllers, controllers of the PID family, lead controllers, which are a way of providing derivative action over a range of frequencies between the zero and the pole um, in order to boost up the phase, generally used near the crossover frequency. Um, lag controllers, which provide integral action between the pole and the zero, um, which is generally used at low frequency in order to bump up the low frequency gain in order to get better tracking. Low pass filters, here I've written a first pass filter and a second pass filter, which can generally be used at the highest of frequencies in order to uh, minimize the, uh, the noise that we have at high frequencies. Um, and notch filters, which is uh, a way of replacing um, undamped or, um, or only slightly damped dynamics near the imaginary axis, so plant poles uh, near the imaginary axis, um, with, uh, with corresponding poles which are um, stable off in the left half plane. And so we've considered those standard control components. And putting together those pieces um, in an appropriate way will in fact address a large number of the practical problems that you'll look at as a controls designer. Um, and so this is a powerful set of tools, but there are some problems that this, these components aren't sufficient for. And so I'd like to consider one such problem today. Um, and uh, so here we have two pendula, which are mounted to a post um, with a spring that, uh, that connect the pendula um, and a motor, which is attached to one of the pendula that can push on the, on the other pendula. And uh, they're uh, mounted to a pivot point on the top of a little post here, um, and they're free to move. And so the motor pushes one pendula against the other one, and the spring is uh, attached between the two pendula. And notice that the pendula are of different lengths. So this is kind of a uh, 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 constrained, uh, a strange system, um, but uh, it has, uh, it's simple to build, and so let's take a look um, at what its equations of motion are, um, and so that's the subject of, of another class, but uh, but if you um, go ahead and, and write down its transfer function um, for appropriate lengths of the two pendula, you get a, a transfer function of this form. So let's take this as, as our starting point, um, and this is indeed a little bit peculiar, um, if we take a look at its um, its root locus plot. We have um, a plant, the plant has a, a pole, a zero, and a pole, at s is equal to one, two, and three in the right half plane, and s is equal to minus one, minus two, and minus three over here in the left half plane. Um, and so that is a somewhat strange system. Um, if we go ahead and develop a controller for this problem. Let's start with D of S is just equal to a proportional component. Um, we see that if we take K as being positive, uh, then we're going to have a branch of the locus that goes between this X and this O, and other stuff over here. Um, but even if we pull in any of these standard components, all these components have their poles and their zeros in the left half plane somewhere. So poles and zeros over here is not going to do anything about that branch of the locus between this X and this O. So there's going to be some closed loop pole somewhere on that branch between this X and this O that all of those control components are not going to be able to do anything about. So a controller that puts together those components um, with positive gain is not sufficient to stabilize this problem. Um, conversely, if we take K as being negative, starting out with proportional control, we're going to have a branch of the locus that goes from this X off to infinity, and maybe, depending upon the rest of the system, that might um, go over into the left half plane for a sufficiently large k. Um, but in addition to that branch, we're going to have another branch that goes from the x to the o. And again, if we take our standard control components that have all their poles and zeros over here on the left half plane, there's nothing that we're going to be able to do about that branch between this x and this o. So we're going to have some close loop pole somewhere on that branch between this x and this o that we're not going to be able to do anything about with our controls components that have all of their poles and zeros into the left half plane. Um, and so we need to do something else. Now we can do pole zero cancellations in the left half plane, as we talked about before. That's fine. We know we're going to miss a little bit. Um, and so that corresponds to a component in the, uh, um, in the closed loop step response um, that is has got a small coefficient because we've missed just a little bit. Um, and since it's in the left half plane, it's time a, times a decaying exponential, and so we don't, don't need to worry about approximate pole zero cancellations in the left half plane. 
But pull zero cancellations in the right half plane are a problem because, of course, we're going to miss a little bit by designing um, a controller zeros or a controller pull that uh, uh, cancel the, the plant pulls and the plant zero. Um, and we miss a little bit, so we're there's going to be a branch of the locus that goes from, for instance, the plant pull to the controller zero. And so there's going to be a closed loop pull somewhere on that branch between this X and the corresponding O. Um, and, uh, and so there's going to be a component of the closed loop system response um, that will have a small coefficient because the X is right next to the O, but it will be times a growing exponential because this is on the right half plane. So eventually that exponential instability will dominate. So we cannot do pull zero cancellations in the right half plane, but we can do them in the left half plane. Um, and so just to keep the root locus design, design simple, let's go ahead and do pull zero cancellations in the left half plane. Um, we might modify that later, but that's a, a, a reasonable starting point. Um, and so we'll put uh, an S plus two in the denominator and an S plus one and an S plus three in the numerator. And then let's call this our, uh, our, our lucky guess. Control design. Um, so let's uh, propose plunking down a zero right there. So we're going to put uh, a, a controller um, zero at um, S is equal to, um, say, um, positive 1.5. So we'll put an S minus 1.5 term um, on the um, numerator there. Um, and we'll see what that does. Um, so again, uh, I will kind of call this my, um, I'm going to give it a name. Um, I'll call this um, y of s over x of s for my numerator and denominator of my control. Um, so now we can go ahead and plot uh, the root locus plot in this case um, after the pull zero cancellations happen between uh, g of s and d of s. Um, we're left with two zeros and two poles in g of s times d of s. Um, so it's a semi-proper um, L of s. Um, and so we'll have a branch of the locus. We're going to use a negative value of k, negative something. Um, and so we'll be drawing the zero degree root locus. And so the branch of the locus goes from the x off to the right. We'll have nothing in here. We'll have a branch of the locus in there. We'll have nothing in here, and we'll have a branch of the locus going off to the left here. So that's uh, what we expect from our uh, zero degree root locus plotting rules. So you can go back and review that. Um, and uh, so um, as k increases, this branch will go all the way off to infinity for some special value of k. We'll go through the North Pole and we'll come in over on the left side here and come in there. Well, as we increase the magnitude of k, again keeping k negative, increasing the magnitude of k, this thing is going to go this direction, this one's going to go this direction. For some value of k, they're going to, to, to meet and um, they'll depart from the real axis. So that departure point is something that you can calculate using the tools that we've discussed already. Um, so they will depart the negative real axis and come over and meet up again at, um, at this branch. And so um, just to follow it, uh, for k is negative, for small magnitude of k, um, our closed loop poles are near our open loop poles. As we increase the magnitude of k, um, the closed loop poles will move like this. This one will go all the way off to infinity and come back in, in here. Uh, increase k to some special value, you'll get a breakaway there. Uh, keep increasing it, and they'll come together there and go to the zeros. And for some intermediate value of k, and uh, by trial and error, found that uh, that, that uh, I value of k is equal to negative 1.08, gave closed loop poles that are in some nice well damped locations over in the left half plane. Um, and so we anticipate a good response from that. Um, and so this is a controller um, that stabilizes um, this problem. Uh, notice that this is um, an improper, um, so I'll just go ahead and note that. Um, 
so uh, we're not going to be able to implement this. We'll, uh, we'll fix this in, in a minute. Um, but before we correct for the fact that it's improper, um, I wanted to develop a systematic approach rather than the lucky guess approach um, for figuring out how to design a, a controller like this. Um, so let's take a look at the closed loop transfer function. So our T of S, um, which we'll denote um, as before, um, we'll take this as um, say G of S over F of S. Um, and remember T of S is simply G of S D of S over one plus G of S D of S. And we have a rational expression for G of S and D of S. So plugging that together and clearing the compound fraction gives us um, B of S Y of S over um, a of s x of s plus b of s y of s. Okay, so what we're going to do um, in this systematic approach is we're going to propose a place to put the poles of t of s. And so we're going to prescribe f, f of s. Prescribe um, f of s, and then what we're going to do is solve for, okay, so if we have f of s um, as equal to something, we'll talk about that in a second, um, so if we prescribe f of s and we know what our a of s and our b of s are, then what we have to do is we have to solve for our x of s and y of s that solve the corresponding equation of this denominator equals that denominator. We're going to need to solve um, f of s is equal to um, a of s x of s plus b of s y of s. Okay, so this equation is a um, special equation called a polynomial polynomial Diophantine equation. Okay, so that's a, a polynomial Diophantine equation. And so what we're going to, uh, to need to do once we have a, a, an f of s in mind that we want to target um, is we're going to need to write out the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this equation, which will both be polynomials in s. And we're need, going to need to match um, the, uh, the, the coefficients of like powers of s between the right-hand side and the left-hand side. Um, and and then solve for the, the coefficients of x and s and y of s such that um, the, the coefficients of like powers of s match between the right hand side and the left hand side. Um, and so what should we prescribe for f of s? That's the next question. Um, and so it will be the subject of uh, a future lecture in, uh, in state space control theory, in fact, um, that uh, a good idea for f of s um, is for our closed loop system, let's take um, the, the poles of the closed loop system to be the union of the stable poles of G of S, so the, the poles in the, the open loop system, we're just gonna leave those where they are, um, and the reflection of the unstable poles of G of S across the imaginary axis into the left half plane. So that's called the minimum energy stabilizing feedback controller, and we'll prove in a future uh, uh, discussion that um, if we choose our closed loop poles as being the union of the stable open loop poles and the reflection of the unstable open loop poles into the left half plane, that will result in the minimum control energy, or the integral of u squared, uh, that provides um, a, a, a stable um, closed loop system. Um, and so let's go ahead and pr prescribe that for this first case. So let me say um, f alpha. Um, so we'll do, do another case down below. Uh, but to begin with, we'll take f alpha of s um, as being just uh, s plus one um, squared times uh, s plus three squared. So this is the um, minimum energy uh, stabilizing controller. 
and an energy stabilizing controller. Um, and uh, so, so let's see um, how to design a DFS uh, that fits that. So let's take um, a DFS is equal to um, a polynomial over another polynomial, right? Um, and so what uh, order polynomial should we choose? Well, our f of s is a fourth order polynomial here. Um, let me go ahead and, uh, and um, write it out actually. So my f of s is equal to um, s to the fourth um, plus eight s cubed plus 22 s squared plus 24 s plus nine. Right, so that's what our uh, our um, f is um, in this uh, in this first uh, approach. This is again the minimum energy stabilizing controller, um, and so the um, d of s that would work here. Let's see. Um, we'll we'll have a, a y of s over x of s. This is a fourth order polynomial on the left hand side. A of s is a fourth order polynomial. So we'll select x of s to be a first order or a zeroth order polynomial. So that's just a, a constant. Um, so let's call that um, x naught. Um, and the b of s is a second order polynomial. So we'll select y of s to be a second order polynomial. So this will be a fourth order polynomial and that'll be a fourth order, fourth order polynomial. So we'll have um, y naught, we'll have um, y1 s, and we'll have y2 s squared. All right. So we'll start with uh, a d of s, which is like that. It's a second order polynomial or over a zeroth order polynomial, which gives us a fourth order polynomial here and a fourth order polynomial there. So we have one, two, three, four parameters in d of s to adjust. Um, and as we insert these expressions for y of s and x of s in here, multiply this out, we have one, two, three, four, five parameters uh, or, or, or five uh, coefficients to match between the left-hand side and the right-hand side, but only four parameters to play with. So we don't have enough degrees of freedom in order to solve this problem. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just bump up the order here. I'm going to make this a little higher order. So let's say y3 s cubed um, and a, uh, an x1 uh, so let me just increase the order of both the numerator and the denominator by one. Now if we multiply this out, we're going to get a fifth order polynomial here and here. And the left hand side um, is, a, uh, is a polynomial which we can write as a fifth order polynomial with a coefficient of zero in front of the first, first component. And so now um, we have a fifth order polynomial, if you like, with a coefficient of zero in front of the leading element um, on, uh, on the left side and uh, on the two terms on the right side. Um, and so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six coefficients of like powers of s between the left side and the right side to match. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six um, degrees of freedom to play with. Um, and so now I can um, just uh, multiply this right hand side out and set um, the coefficients of like powers of s on the right side equal to the corresponding uh, uh, coefficients on the left side. I get six equations in six unknowns, which I can then solve. Um, and. Uh, and then the answer that I get um, is um, equal to k times um, s plus 1 times s plus 3 um, times um, s minus 1.714 over um, s plus um, 2.018 and so and the value of k um, that comes out is negative 1. All right so um, that's just what you get by um, plugging together the six equations and six unknowns and solving them um, and this is remarkably close uh, to our lucky guess controller. Um, so we have um, a uh, 
pull zero cancellations for the S plus one and the S plus three. We have an almost uh, uh, pull zero cancellation corresponding to this uh, term uh, S plus 2.018. Um, and then the extra zero that we plunked down into the right half, right, right half plane um, is very close to the, uh, the, the zero location that we, uh, we guessed just by fiddling. Um, but this is a systematic procedure. Um, our uh, F that we prescribed um, was the F corresponding to the um, minimum energy stabilizing controller idea. Um, and so we just took the union of the um, stable uh, open loop poles and the reflection of the unstable open loop poles into the left half side. That gave us our F. And we just solved this um, and we got um, a, a D of S, which was very close to this guess. Um, and so now we need to fix the problem that this is not a, uh, um, a proper controller. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, so let's call this D alpha of S, corresponds to our F alpha of S. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, propose a new controller and I'm going to take d beta of s um, as being, let's keep the numerator the same order. But let's bump up the denominator uh, until the point that we get to, uh, to to be a strictly proper controller so we can easily implement it. Um, and so let's bump up the denominator to be a fourth order in this case. So we have x4 s to the fourth plus x3 s cubed plus x2 s squared plus x1 s plus x naught. Right. And so that will be the, the, the form that we will propose um, for the controller. Um, and um, so now we're going to um, uh, prescribe um, the, uh, the F, the um, closed loop poles, um, as being, let's start with what we had before, um, S plus one squared, um, S plus three, squared. Um, and now um, we'll see that our um, x of s is a fourth order polynomial. So fourth order polynomial times another fourth order polynomial is going to give us an eighth order polynomial on the right hand side. So f of s in order to be able to, to, to make uh, this work out, f of s is going to need to be an eighth order polynomial as well because this is a lower order polynomial clearly. Um, so we need eighth order equal to eighth order. So we need this to be an eighth order target somehow. So in order to get that to be eighth order, Let's just put in a little bit of, uh, of low pass filtering of the correct order uh, and let's make it an order of magnitude faster than the dynamics that we're shooting for that came from the minimum energy stabilizing feedback controller idea. Um, and so let's put say an S plus 30 squared um, as, our, um, as our F beta. And so again, we need to solve the polynomial Diophantine equation. We have our um, expression for um, F on the left hand side. We have our um, A of S and our B of S. Um, and we have our uh, new values of, uh, of, of Y of S and, and, and X of S. Um, And so um, let's just uh, plug those things out, multiply it out, and so we're going to have an eighth-order polynomial on this side, an eighth-order polynomial on that side. So that means we have nine coefficients of the various powers of s on this side and that side that we need to match, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parameters that we need to match. So we have nine equations and nine unknowns, um, and so we can set up a, a, a big uh, linear system and, and solve that. And what we get when we uh, when, when we solve that um, is um, d beta of s is equal to, um, we can write it as um, k times um, s plus 1, um, s plus 3, s minus 1.604 um, over um, s um, plus um, 2.0104 um, times a couple more terms. Um, let's write it as minus omega 1 over um, s minus omega 1 and uh, omega um, 
omega 2 squared over um, s squared plus 2 zeta uh, omega 2 uh, plus omega 2 squared. Okay, um, and uh, so if we work out uh, from those equations what these uh, certain constants are, we get uh, k is equal to um, negative 1.03. We get uh, an, an omega 1 um, in this uh, term, uh, which is equal to um, 115.6. And we get an omega 2, which is equal to um, 185. Um, with the corresponding zeta of um, 0.654. Okay, and so um, what we have found is a controller which is very close to our minimum energy stabilizing feedback controller in terms of um, the poles and zeros in the vicinity of the origin. Um, and uh, so even the, the um, value of, of the overall gain um, is, is close to that times a couple of low-pass filters. So this is just a standard second-order low-pass filter. Um, this is acts as a low-pass filter. It acts as 1 and for s is equal to i omega um, for, uh, for, for low frequencies. Um, but uh, as, uh, as you crank uh, the, the, um, the frequency um, up, um, we, we begin to get roll-off, but the, 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 the phase goes the opposite direction um, from the phase of the low-pass filter because um, the um, pole is, is in the right half plane um, with, with this filter, uh, but it still acts um, just to pass low frequencies through. Um, so we can think of this as, as a different kind of a low pass filter. Um, and so we have some low pass filtering applied to a controller which is very similar uh, to the controllers that we found before. But now this form, take a look here, this form is strictly proper, so this is implementable. Um, so this is a way of solving for a controller which uh, is a good controller. Um, it's the, the one that uses minimum control energy, so it's not going to push the system too hard. Um, and how to modify that control design um, in order to make it implementable. And this choice that we made um, of prescribing um, this, this extra low pass filtering here, um, there's a lot of flexibility there. You could have chosen um, other low pass filters here um, and you would have gotten other low pass filtering terms here um, and it would have been of uh, little consequence because this is fast low pass filtering. Um, the dynamics is very similar, uh, in, uh, the, the, the important frequencies, the, the slower frequencies um, are, are, are close to, to what we had for the minimum energy stabilizing feedback controller. Um, and uh, so, so that's a systematic way of finding a proper, uh, in this case a strictly proper controller um, for controlling this otherwise problematical system. And now that you have a systematic approach, you can easily extend it. Um, so let me uh, propose a challenge problem here. Um, so now that you have um, this approach in mind, um, consider the, the problem uh, g of s is equal to um, s plus 2, sorry, um, s plus s minus 2 times s plus 4 s minus 4 over um, s plus 1 s minus 1 s plus 3 s minus 3 s plus 5 s minus 5 All right so uh, corresponding root locus we've got uh, x o x o x x o x o x um, and good luck trying to guess your way to a solution uh, of a controller d of s that um, solves this problem uh, but if you follow this systematic approach first to um, set up a um, stabilizing uh, controller that is improper um, and then uh, modifying it in order to, uh, to, to find one with similar dynamics at the frequencies of the plant um, that is uh, strictly proper, um, you have a systematic procedure and so now you can do it. Um, so that is a challenge problem that, uh, that I'd, I'd like you to go ahead and, and, and try as an exercise. Um, and um, further 
it's a little bit tedious setting up and solving all of these um, polynomial Diophantine equations by hand, as I've discussed uh, so far, setting up six equations and six unknowns, or in this case we had nine equations and nine unknowns. And you have to multiply a lot of stuff out and, and do that by hand. Um, and so instead of doing that, um, there is a systematic procedure for solving this boxed equation, the polynomial Diophantine equation. And the algorithm is called the extended Euclidean algorithm. Um, so I'd like you to take a look at the following video, which will discuss how to solve the polynomial Diophantine equation um, using the extended Euclidean algorithm, and use that as a simpler way of solving the, the equation at the heart of the matter in order to do this pole placement problem.